Is this the one? Yeah, that was like the worst three weeks of my life. King is like the stupidest fucking piece of all time. Like he's protected by the, the chess god. First 10 second I. I mean, I almost got accidentally canceled by 270 million people, so. <laughs> <laughs>Hey everyone, it's Toast and welcome back to another episode of Two People Talking. Today I'm joined by Gotham Chess, Levy Rosman, and of course, big thank you to Team Liquid for making all of this possible, as well as Alienware for providing all the setup, all this gear, so really appreciate them. And if you've been here before, you know the drill. We got a toaster on the table. Every now and then it's gonna pop up with a prompt and we're gonna tackle whatever challenge they may present to us. All right, so yeah, welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, shout out to Alienware. This is pretty sick. Okay, we're gonna hold him. We're gonna get that one more time. We had a plane fly over. There was a plane? <laughs> what? <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is a pretty incredible setup here. So definitely shout out to Alienware. I'm really excited for this one because I feel like you've been in my peripheral circle for a while now, but we never actually got a chance to like sit down and talk because you commentated yeah. my chess boxing event. Yeah, well, that's actually pretty late. Like that was December, 2022. In 2018, I was like teaching chess in the mean streets of New York City mm -hmm. and my roommate liked to watch streams. So <laughs> I got into Twitch because I knew of Lex Veldhaus, a poker guy mm -hmm. and you. And I was like, oh, he's watching Toast again. Wow. He's watching Toast again. Mm -hmm. And like he got like a Team Liquid hoodie once. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty trippy to be uh, not only just sitting across from you now, but just like in general, just interacting with people who for a long time were just up on a screen and I was watching. How long have you been playing chess for? 22 years and 22 I'm 27. 22 years, yeah. oh, wow. What made you start like streaming on Twitch? So I was in college and I was teaching chess, middle schoolers and elementary school kids for like three, four years. Until 2018 when I started basically like the degenerate hours of the night, like right. 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. I was like playing speed games and playing like classic rock. I didn't even know what you could like play music on a laptop mm -hmm. and have it on OBS. I was playing it on my phone <laughs> and I, like it was picking up on the mic. Dude, it was it was really, really funny. Uh, I started YouTube though in 2020. So when the world kind of shut down. I'm not sure if you know this, but the way I got ready for my chess, chess boxing event was watching your videos. Oh, I didn't know that. There's a lot of chess content out there, but I think you make it very easy to watch because you do like a lot of jokes, a lot of humor mixed in. I'm from a family where like, if we complimented each other, we had to like immediately follow it up with a self-deprecating joke. So I'm very bad at taking compliments, but that was, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. So when Queen's Gambit came out, my, I changed my whole thinking of how to make content, which was, if a person gets a, a chess video recommended on the sidebar, how likely are they to, first of all, click it, watch it, enjoy it, and then stick around in the chess world? And that's sort of been kind of my approach for like two, three years. So you saying that, I'm like, okay, like I'm, I, I'm, I'm doing something right. So you mentioned a Queen's Gambit. How mm -hmm. big was it really to like the chess community? Uh, the Queen's Gambit was single-handedly the best thing to ever happen to chess. Wow. Yeah. Did you notice like, a huge boom in your viewers, your audience. Yeah, so Queen's Gambit came out October 2020. Mm -hmm. Chess already was trending a little bit up from around March, April 2020 because of PogChamps. So we were doing well, uh, but I was making content like how to play the Queen's Gambit, which I had months before Queen's Gambit came out, but it was just, you know, how to get like a 10 minute chess opening video. All right. And uh, my overall channel views were 60K in 48 hours which is, you know, it's like a reasonable amount. Yeah. After Queen's Gambit, it was a million in 48 hours. Jesus. And clearly they were enjoying it. Two million people watch this? From the outside looking in, my exposure to the chess scene has been like pog champs, like, oh, pro players team up with streamers and like chess boxing. But occasionally, I didn't think this was possible, but chess gets into drama pretty often. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking how, because you guys are just playing a very simple game. Yep. Like, so how does that happen? I don't I don't know like what the reason is why we constantly have drama, but we, we really do like constantly have something going on. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the biggest one, the cheating scandal, but I'm not, a, I'm not a dramatic dude. I just like to hang out with my wife and my dog. Mm -hmm. so. would, would you say you're a very neutral person? Because I don't see you get into a lot of drama. I mean, I almost got accidentally canceled by 270 million people, so. Accidentally canceled. Yeah. Oh, there's the toast. Oh, is this a retweet? It is, <laughs> it's a retweet and a chess piece. All right, chess drama. I'm excited for this because every time I hear about chess drama, I'm like, 
what is happening? Is any of this true? Who are these people? Like, it's very juicy stuff. <laughs> ha! Is this the one? Yeah, that was like the worst three weeks of my life. <laughs> Indonesian chess scandal, dear Indonesia. This has been a fun journey, but now it has come to an end. You can't believe the truth or hide from it. I'll reopen my YouTube channel soon. Feel free to enjoy my video so you can beat your friends at chess. Peace and love. What happened? Yeah, so there's obviously a long answer. The short answer is uh, I was playing a game. Sorry, hold for one second. <laughs> Do you hear it? Mm. Oh, yeah. Basically, I was live streaming on Twitch yeah. and playing some games, and my audience likes for me to play sometimes some longer games, 10 minute games. Mm -hmm. The problem with those games is they give uh, people an opportunity to cheat. You know, look at your smartphone, and I always check if my opponent has a high elo and no title. Mm -hmm. And this person looked just a bit suspicious, their profile, right? Like, I don't know who the person is, I don't care like what country they're from, they just so happen to be from Indonesia. And sure enough, I got killed, and I've played chess long enough to know when I'm playing a bot, like when I'm not playing a human, with a 98.5% certainty, probably. And I just reported the account, and I moved on. Mm -hmm. I just went about my day. <laughs> that night, at midnight, I'm doing what any normal, you know, 20-something-year-old does, is I'm on my phone, and I see my Twitter is blowing up. And it's people who are like, dude, you're going viral in Indonesia. Some <laughs> guy made a Facebook post. I'm like, what the f is going on? This account belonged to an older man in his 50s, 60s. His son made a Facebook post saying, my dad beat a big chess streamer, and this chess streamer got mad that he lost, got his fans to mass report my dad, and now my dad is banned. <laughs> like, imagine, like, that's the story you see. You're like, oh my God, this is horrible. Like, what a horrible person. Yeah. Within the span of, like, three hours, my videos went from 99% liked on YouTube to 99% disliked. Wow. I was getting thousands of DM requests on Instagram telling me to, that they were gonna murder me, that they were going to kill my family, and there was millions of people invested in this scandal. Long story short, this guy was invited to play uh, a live game against Irene, mm -hmm. who's around my level in chess, on a podcast called Derry Corbusier. One and a half million people watched it live. Watched this old man lose three nothing. Their argument was he's played so much against the bot, he knows how to play like a bot now. He was an intermediate player, but he was cheating. That account once won 27 games in a row with a higher accuracy than Magnus Carlsen. What is this, like the goat, like secretly? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So I had to geo-block my YouTube channel. They still got through. And then they, they were leaving comments like, what, you don't think we have VPN? And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I just can't escape. Uh, it really shows that, you know, you gotta like wait on things before you, you know, have like this gut reaction uh, that people do, so. Magnus Carlsen versus Hans Neiman. I think this is the one. Yeah that got the most mainstream attention. Yeah, yeah, this, uh, this was a weird one for sure. Hans is also a bit of a trash talker. He played Magnus and, and then Magnus lost and withdrew from the tournament with a super cryptic tweet. Mm -hmm. And then obviously Reddit kind of ran away with fun theories of how you could cheat like this face to face. One of them which was vibrating beads inside of your anus. I've perfected saying that by the way without laughing. Mm -hmm. And then every international news platform put out this theory. And I think once it got like 15 stories deep, people thought it was real. It was ridiculous how big this thing got. And people got into chess, that was our second boom. It went way beyond the Queen's Gambit popularity. Do you have any of your own theories to uh, what actually happened? I think if you pull off successful cheating in face-to-face -face tournaments, it's like the greatest heist in, in, in chess history and probably just in any, I mean, how do you cheat like this with a chessboard mm -hmm. and security measures in place? I don't think we're ever gonna know what really happened. What do you think it is about like chess people that gets them into more drama? Chess players to be successful, they have to be very individualistic. So they have maybe very high like ego or not like the best social awareness necessarily. I'm not accusing anybody <laughs> of anything, all right? I'm just saying that is a potential reason. But yeah, we have had like two bombs of, of, of drama over the last couple of years. Let's talk about content because I'm very interested in the almost evolution of the chess streamers in this space. Because you got your Hikaru, mm -hmm. you got you, um, the Botas sisters. Like you guys came in together as like the chess expert, but all you know separated into doing different things. What has kind of been like your experience? going from just chess to doing all these extra stuff. The content side of it is, I have a limitless amount of ideas. Like what I've realized in the last couple of years is, 
my brain is just hardwired to think of content in, the, in a unique way, specifically to chess. Scaling that to YouTube took a little bit of getting used to, but I love thinking of different concepts for content. And specifically in 2023, I wanted to do more of this get out of the house type of stuff. This was gonna be the year where I went beyond just being YouTube chess guy. Mm -hmm. So I have like my book that's coming out later this year. I'm getting interviewed in places like uh, PBS where the average viewing audience is 62 years old. So that's way beyond what you would get on YouTube. So I think people just can't see you as like the educational teacher type now. Yeah, yeah. maybe like, okay, I'm also, you know, now I've gone, I have like some few memes under my belt. Like nobody can say the, the rook anymore, but. The rook? Yeah, like uh, if you're playing a chess game and you're gonna sacrifice the rook, now it's like you have to sacrifice the rook! The rook! Like it's like, you know, it's uh, because I was commentating a, a game, but I just kind of said, oh yeah, uh, in this position, the idea is not to play this. Magnus' idea was to sacrifice the rook. And I was like, really? And so from there, Watch any video, any short, doesn't matter, any any creator, if a rook is sacrificed or a queen is sacrificed or a bishop or anything, the whole comment section is just that. Do you have a lot of control over your thumbnails? Or? I come up with the idea for like 95% of them and then I say like, this is what I want and then my thumbnail guy is like, this idea is bad. Here, here's like a slightly different colored version or you know, for like 5% of them, I'm like, dude, I'm too, I'm too busy. Oh. Oh my God. All right, Ooh. we got a little YouTube icon. We're gonna be looking at some of the thumbnails that oh God. you put up because no. you just said no, 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 no. you have a lot of control over it. So you would have, you know, had a hand in some of these thumbnails. Nope, not me. I mean, your YouTube videos do very well. And do, I, right? yeah, I would consider myself a bit of a thumbnail title expert. So I'm gonna be judging some of these. All right. What the thumbnail? Oh, that's not a thumbnail. I thought it was just a <laughs> Gotham chess. Okay, this is insane. Dot 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 dot. Yes. So, insane is a very popular word. Oh, that word does so well. It's like the algorithm busting word. You went with the just this is insane. Nothing else. No yep. context. Nothing about chess. Yeah. It could be anything. Could be anything. <laughs> I've had I'm the seven. The story of this thumbnail, the story of all of the last thumbnails in April 2023, World Chess Championship. So it's the exact same content 14 times. Ah. Anytime there's a tournament and, I, and I'm the recap guy, if you name it World Chess Championship Game 6, not only is that not getting watched, it's just not even getting recommended mm. because you named it the exact same thing. Yeah. This World Championship, I didn't know what to do. I slapped my dumb face on there and all these brilliant symbols and I just kept increasing the number because that was the round recap. So this is round seven. It's, it's part of the game. Part of it's the YouTube part of game. game. I mean, thumbnail faces, it's something you do in like the comfort of your own room when no one will ever see. Yep. Except your editor. Your editor will probably look at you. I ain't seeing that shit. Nope. Ain't, I didn't have to edit these videos. But yeah, sometimes I'm like, dude, I sent you a thumbnail face. And, I'm, and I mean, I literally sent him two photos like. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You got is... the Gordon Ramsay in there. Yep. Absolutely awful. Yep. Guess the Elo. I'm so I'm so glad you guys uh, selected this one because there's a fun fact about this one. Mm -hmm. Do you see it, bro? I got six fingers. <laughs> I don't know how my thumbnail man did that. He, he, he accidentally <laughs> gave me six fingers on this thumbnail. <laughs> and he used like an AI art generator. He might have. Yeah. Ha ha. <laughs> this is the Chronicles of the 2023 World Chess Championship right here. I feel like this works really well for you. Like you, all your videos should be like this in a way. Uh, some of these videos had like a 14% click-through rate, but a watch time of 15 minutes. So those are monster videos. They're just gonna outperform everything. Yeah. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! He's, he's so cute as the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa of chess with Magnus Carlsen's face. Yep. Uh, who, who came up with this? I want to say it was me, but this video did like really, really poorly. And uh, it's probably, again, just a matter of too dark. And also you just look at this like, what the f*** <laughs> is that? Like, why would I click on that, you know? I'll probably go back and change this. This works. I look at this, I'm like, bang your thumbnail. <laughs> Very well done. It has a theme. You see your face and it's like, I associate this face and this kind of like thumbnail with a quality I'm familiar with and they'll click through because it's like, oh, it's Gotham Chess. I yeah. know exactly what I'm getting. A lot of people do get upset when you like do clickbait or do thumbnail faces that are associated with clickbait. 
But if you make good content, you want to reach as much people as you can. And to do that, yes, you have to do a wacky face with like a quirky title. Yeah, I, I don't overthink it. And like 98% of people just watch. Yeah. I'm just a watcher. The strategy here now would be to use your thumbnail style for this video. Yeah. So people click on it yeah. thinking it's... Oh yeah, you gotta. You should definitely name it like Gotham Chess Spills His Secrets, cause like I kinda did, you know, but like also <laughs> not really. Like <laughs> I did a couple interviews on, on Wired and like I outperformed Millie Bobby Brown. So <laughs> I'm just saying like people are really interested in the chess. This is not a period of my, of my life I ever thought I would be living in. All right, now we're gonna talk about uh, that event we were both at. The event of that night, I still have some trouble remembering the chess boxing event. Really? Yeah. It all happened. Well, I was the last fight of the night. It's mm -hmm. like going to class and it's presentation day, but you're the last person. So instead of enjoying the presentation that other kids give, you're just constantly thinking about yours the entire time. Also, I, I know you're supposed to like ask me the questions. Weren't you like a last minute switch to be the last fight? Well, I'm not sure if people know this, but the was supposed to fight I think. If I'm leaking information, sorry. Uh, and that was going to be the main event. That's crazy, because I thought he was going to fight a <laughs> but okay. <laughs> yeah, it was initially, uh, but yeah, we ended up being the main event. And I loved your reaction to like all the blunders, especially the forced uh, queen. Yeah. And I didn't know what was going on, because at that point, he already punched me in the head like 10 times. Yeah, yeah. And I was trying, to, I was still trying to escape, because it was my king running away. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Okay, I'm gonna move it away yeah. here. Can't move it away here. Yeah. Can't. It's like, oh, there's only one thing. I was actually terrified of 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 the commentary. Like when I first showed up to the arena and it was empty, because it was so different yeah. than sitting in my own house. I can't imagine how you felt. Were you like nervous? Like I'm gonna go fight at somebody. I'm gonna play chess against somebody. Like what? A, what's gonna happen? I knew I was in trouble in the locker room. We were just chilling, mm -hmm. and I heard his coach talk to him. Yeah. And the way his coach talked, it was like that Boston. Rocky type kind of accent. Oh my God. Point Crow went for the very popular strategy in influence of boxing, which is like, I'm gonna run at you and start swinging and there's no way you can prepare for it because you're just like, you're a streamer. And it worked and he knocked me down like first 10 seconds on. Yeah, you can't back out, like you can, but everyone's gonna kind of like rag on you. You have to give it your all. Like I was literally watching your videos before and I remember- So was he. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause I think you, you just have a great way of explaining things. You almost chess boxed, right? Yeah. What happened? Leah Ludd hit me up like July. Like, you wanna do chess boxing? I was like, all right, maybe. And there's only one opponent in the world for whom it makes sense for me to chess box. Like play chess and box, and he's kind of like well known in the chess world and a little bit beyond it. And that's uh, Eric Rosen. Problem is he's like a really good friend. Like he took my wedding photos. <laughs> like why am I gonna beat the shit out of this dude or have him beat the shit out of me? Like there's no, again, there's, there's just no winning. I mean, what am I gonna hurt him? I'd feel terrible. And it's like, I'm not a fighter. I'm a dude who sits at home and makes chess YouTube videos. Like the hell am I doing like getting punched in the face? I think that's what's fun about it. It's like, it's not gonna be the best boxing, but it's just so, Brutal, because mm -hmm. it's just two people with yep. very limited physical attributes just wailing on each other. Do you think there's any like parallels between boxing and chess? There, there's one-on-one -on -one tendencies constantly, fighting back. You can make a comeback while you're losing. When you play in competition, do you ever? Ooh. Do I ever? Ooh. Okay. <laughs> we got a little boxing glove here, and the segment is we're gonna assign personalities to chess pieces. Okay. We need to humanize these chess pieces because they're so like, you know, no one ever really thinks about the chess pieces as individuals. Which chess piece would you want to date? Uh, I would date the queen, AKA Mary the queen, AKA my wife, Lucy, love you very much. Um, she's uh, divine, powerful, uh, limitless, uh, sensational, uh, well, except in chess, you could make nine queens, but no, there's only one of her. <laughs> so there, there you go, that, that, that's, that's what we'll do for the queen. Who would be your best friend and their personality? Who would I want my friend to be if it was a chess piece? I mean, that's a good question. A knight, let's say a knight, all right? Because a knight is, uh, it could be, it could be like brave, you know, it can, it's flexible, I, it can like, do creative things here and there. It can like jump over pieces. I want a friend that like, you know, you can't replicate. Also, I got like a handful of close friends. I don't know if I can compare any of them to a knight, but let's just say a knight. 
Yeah, how would you describe a pawn's personality? Because they just feel like this, they just move forward. They yeah. just they don't move, just move forward. What do you mean? They, they, di they diagonally? Pawn is like two on its first move, or one. Only one after that. Like, why can a pawn go forward, but when it captures, it has to go diagonal? I don't know. Whoever made the rules of chess, but it, they they work. Mm. And also, they can en passant, which is the most obscure thing. Yeah, yeah. In basically, chess. probably some like aristocrat in like the 16th century got mad because he had like a pawn, <laughs> and like there was three behind, and like one of them snuck past his pawn. Right. He was like, Nah, that's bullshit. Now when that's there, and you go two only for this turn, I got you. And if you complain, I'm gonna I'm gonna execute you. It's a kind of a ridiculous rule. Uh, but it, it, it serves its purpose too. So we talked about most of the pieces. So rooks are reliable and protective. Bishops, I feel like Bishops. they're the most limited. Yeah, it's like a fast car that has five miles to the gallon. Yeah. Oh, well, except that's really bad because they can only stay on one color, so they can't even go to the, half the board. And yet, they are considered better than knights. Knights have access to the whole board, but bishops are considered better because they're faster. You can go from one corner to the other faster. It's like a private jet. And uh, actually, the most boring one would be the king, right? You just kind of like... Yeah, his bozo just walks one square. A one square. And he sucks. Like, he's, he literally is awful. Like, he, he waits for everyone to die, and then he takes center stage in the endgame. King is like the stupidest fucking piece of all time. Like, and his ass can't even get taken. Yeah. He's protected by the, the chess gods. Like, you can't even take the king, you know? It's like, oh, it's an illegal move. <laughs> it's the stupidest shit in the world. Like, I, whatever. I'm, I'm very passionate about the subject. Well, there you go. The personalities of every chess piece. I hope someone somewhere makes a animated kids show about them. I hope they do. Teach kids chess. So uh, you recently uh, announced that you will never touch chess again. Why is that? Well, I did tweet I was going to retire, uh, I, if, if, that, if that's what you meant. I, not from chess completely. Mm. I, uh, I still got, you know, I still got a few videos in me. Competitive chess to contend for the Grandmaster title. That is what I was not going to do anymore for a variety of reasons. I said I'm, I'm not going to do this anymore until I can dedicate more time. And uh, I think I also need to mature as a person, mm -hmm. like mental fortitude and uh, mental maturity. I, I need like five or six more years, I think. And you also once said the pain of loss outweighs victory. Yeah. When it comes to chess. Yeah, when I win, I don't enjoy it as much, as much as I hate losing. Got it. So my biggest, like everybody has something they're bad at in chess, the ability to play at a high level over a whole game. Mm. I, uh, I get hype that I'm like in a better position, something happens. It's a mix of losing focus and knowing I'm gonna throw the game again. Like just, I, like I've been here before. I've been to the spot a hundred times. And at some point you just break down. You just can't do it anymore. You could do anything in life and fail five times and be like, oh, that, that sucks, but you know, I'll get them next time. You lose five chess games in a row. Like you, you doubt yourself to a degree, like intellectually, you know, all this stuff. I probably need a sports psychologist. I need like five, six years. I need to not make a YouTube video every day, but. I have like a deep, deep desire to, to come back one day. Do you experience any frustration with being content creator then? No, no, I, I love it. Uh, I feel it's really weird to say I feel like I have a, a purpose uh, because at the end of the day, I'm just a dude who talks about chess in front of a camera. Like you want to simplify it down to one sentence. Uh, that's basically what I am. Uh, but when there's like a world championship going on, like I'm the recap guy. Like people take time off during their lunch break at work to just tune in for 30 minutes just to get an update and then they move on. People watch me on their, on their TV in the living room with their, with their kid. Like that's nuts, right? I, I went to, a, I visited YouTube uh, HQ in um, the Bay Area. We were gonna have a social event and like 400 people showed up with their kids. It, it's an ageless game. And I remember the time in middle school where chess was a black stain on you as a person and now everybody's into it. No, I, I love it and I, I love the opportunities and I don't know how long it's gonna last, so. I think what you're doing definitely is impacting essentially the next generation of chess players. Do you have any uh, advice for people who are just getting into chess or like try and take it more seriously than your average chess club? The biggest advice that I would give to people is to be prepared to lose. And that, that's not possible for some people. In my own training journey, it's very hard to lose, but it's very hard to just get into something and you play 100 games, you lose 60 games. Why would anybody participate in something that they're losing 60% of the time? So if you want to take it seriously, be prepared to lose. 
and you actually lose, you never lose, if you analyze your games and you learn one or two things from every game. Uh, I give separate uh, advice to adults, which is completely leave your ego and career at the door because very successful people like to imprint the attributes that have made them successful in their job to chess. Like, oh, I'm not good at this skill, I'm just gonna focus. Shut up. <laughs> like, just, that's, you cannot stamp these huge generalizations on things. Just blank slate it, like learn to be a student again, especially if you're like uber successful in other walks of life. It's gonna be very humbling to just completely suck at something that only requires your brain. So what's, uh, what's next for you? Just more content creation? Anything we can expect? My book officially gets printed in May, but it's only going to be available in October. So I've learned that the book industry is super slow. <laughs> What's it about? It's called How to Play Chess, The Ultimate Guide for Beginners and Beyond. Okay. But, but the reason for writing it is because for the last three years, I've been getting asked, what's a good chess book? Mm -hmm. I want to buy a good chess book for beginners. Uh, and there's no good answer. Like most of the chess books that have been written historically are boring. So I try to put my YouTube videos into book form, like the way I present certain concepts, you cannot really reinvent the wheel with chess, but I think the tone of voice is a bit more lively, engaging, it kind of like talks to the viewer like we do like on YouTube. There's QR codes at the end of every chapter, so you want to practice more, you can like scan the QR code and drill what you just learned in the chapter, which I think is pretty fun. And it's kind of like the book that if you want to read 15 minutes before you sleep, you will learn something. It hopefully will redefine how people learn chess uh, in book form. That's next, and I don't know, whatever podcast I get invited to, I'm doing a few uh, in LA. Just like accepting opportunities, uh, I'm out in New York, so I feel kind of disconnected from the whole creator space. I don't know many people, but when I meet them, they're all very nice, even like as giant as they are. I'm just kind of uh, enjoying the ride. So yeah, that was two people talking with Gotham Chess. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show, and uh... I know you can't spoil what kind of podcast you'll be on, but is there anything you can tell us, like one thing coming up? Yeah, uh, the Yard with Ludwig and Hassan's podcast. I spoiled it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like they upload pretty fast, so maybe this one, theirs will come out like faster than oh, this maybe one. Maybe it's like already been out for two weeks. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. So check out uh, Gotham Chess on YouTube, Twitter. Is it Gotham Chess everywhere? Just, yeah, it's Gotham Chess everywhere. Uh, it's Levy Rosman on, on TikTok. All right, so that's gonna be the last episode of Two People Talking for this season. Stay tuned for news on the next one. Who knows who's gonna be on it? I might be on it, I might not be on it, but you will know one thing. There's gonna be two people and they will be talking. Oh, damn, I'm the grand finale. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. So thank you all so much for watching. And again, please check out Alienware. Please check out Team Liquid on the socials. All of this was made possible because of them. Huge thank you. And I really enjoyed my time here, and I hope all of you did as well. Until next time.